How are we doing, VC? I hope everyone's keeping well, looking after themselves. Mr. Boulder here with um, my continuation of my uh, ranking of the albums by the Big Four. And this is the uh, fourth album from the Big Four. Um, I think I'm going to do one more of these. I think I'll do the fifth album and probably knock this one on the head. Because um, by the time you get to the fifth albums, um, they're not, some of them are not thrashing anymore. So um, probably do the next ones at some point and then that'll be it. So yeah, today is about the uh, the fourth album released by the Big Four of Thrash Metal. So uh, let's get into it. Um, all of these albums are really good. The fact that this one's bringing up the rear is not saying anything bad about it at all. It's a really, really good album. Fourth place is uh, Anthrax's State of Euphoria. This was my very first Anthrax album, which I got on cassette back in 1988 for Christmas. This is a great album. Um, let's get the bad out of the way first. Um, for me, couldn't care less if I ever heard any social again in my entire life. I like the song, but it's just one of those cases of I've heard it so much over the years it's overplayed. I've seen Anthrax three times, and every time uh, they play any social, that's my uh, cue to go to the bar and get another beer. Um, you've got 13 on here as well, which is absolutely pointless. But this is packed with uh, great songs. This one often gets uh, kind of forgotten about, I think. Um, I think they released this um, pretty quickly after uh, Among the Living. I think I saw an interview years ago saying that it was a bit rushed. Um, but I think it's pretty good. Um, well, I think it's really good. It's just definitely not as good as what came just a year before it. There's plenty of good stuff on here. Um, be All End All. Out of sight, out of mind, the second track. It's probably my favourite song on the whole album. Make Me Laugh. Who Cares Wins Good. Now It's Dark. Schism. Misery Loves Company. Finale. Some really good stuff on here. Just a couple uh, that let it down as far as I'm concerned. But a great album. I really, really enjoy this one. Um, yeah, what more can you say? Uh, yeah, kind of gets forgotten about, I think, because um, the one before is considered their best album. And I think a lot of people felt a bit let down by this, but I certainly think it's good, and I'm glad it's in the collection. My very first Anthrax album, that's uh, State of Euphoria from uh, 1988. The fact that this one is third place goes to show how good these albums are. Third place is Slayer South of Heaven. Um, again, this is another album. Um, I mean, everyone knows it and everyone loves it. But um, I sometimes think it gets lost in the shuffle because um, before it, you've got uh, Rain and Blood and after it, you've got Seasons in the Abyss. Widely regarded as two absolute monster classic thrash metal albums. And this someone, this sometimes, I should say, gets uh, lost in the mix a little. But I think it's bloody good. I really do think it's great. Um, brilliant album. I didn't hear this one until probably sort of late 90s. I didn't get into Slayer until about 1995 when I was about 18. Brilliant stuff. Uh, recorded by the classic lineup, of course. Uh, so many good songs on this. When it starts off with the title track, uh, that intro riff, brilliant. Uh, great lyrics in that song as well. And then straight into um, my second, the second song, probably my favourite on the album, Silent Scream. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Again, more great riffs. Um, amazing stuff. Um, Live on Dead's cool. Behind the Crooked Cross is cool. Side Closes is a mandatory suicide. I do like it, but not one of my favourites on this album. It's got to be said. Ghost of War, Read Between the Lies. Cleanse the Soul, This is an Aggressor, a Judas Priest cover. Ends with Spill the Blood. This one was produced by Rick Rubin, of course. Um... Yeah, that, that partnership was working pretty well, really, wasn't it? Quite, um, not quite the beast that um, Rain and Blood is. This one slowed down a little bit more, and I think that was a good move rather than just put out another exact clone of what you did before. I mean, Rain and Blood's a beast of an album, but this is also very, very good. Like I say, to say that this is third place in this list just goes to show the quality of the albums that were released. Um, essential stuff, really, really good. Your Slayer collection is uh, naked without it. But that's my number three. 
Slayers uh, South of Heaven from 1988. Um, yeah, another absolutely fantastic thrash metal album. Top two, pretty close to be honest. And I'm not going to talk about this one too much because I spoke about this album only a couple of weeks ago. But it's Metallica's Injustice for All. Once again, this was my first uh, Metallica album. Once again, got it for uh, Christmas 1988 on cassette. Uh, an absolute beast of an album. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, packed with very long songs, um, great song structures. Brilliant riffing. Uh, that's right, even Lars Ulrich does a great turn on the drums on this one. It's packed with absolutely amazing songs. Uh, Black and the title track, one, one of the best songs they ever wrote. Harvester of Sorrow, To Live Is To Die. Dies Eve, it's just fantastic. Such a good album. Um, this is, of course, a lot of people would say the last decent thing that Metallica did. And um, I can understand why people say that. Uh, but I uh, also like a lot of the stuff they want to do afterwards. But there's no doubt about it. The first four records is easily their best. Amazing stuff. Of course, uh, there's no bloody bass on this, which is a shame. But um, it's all about the songs, and the songs really stand up. They still hold up now. This is an absolute beast of an album. I often sort of think... Uh, this one gets a little bit overlooked as well, because people tend to talk more about Ride the Lightning than Master of Puppets. Both fantastic albums, of course. But Justice for All is another absolute beast. Um, a thrash metal masterclass. This is a 9 out of 10 album, without a doubt about it. Brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, there you go. The Justice for All, that's my number two in this ranking. Which, of course, means number one. Is Megadeth's Rust in Peace. Um, a big album for me. An absolute monster of an album for me. Um, the first song on this, Holy Wars, is the song that made me want to play the guitar. I remember seeing the video on Noisy Mothers. If you're from the UK, you'll remember Noisy Mothers. It was the only sort of um, program that was showing any kind of metal news, metal music videos, etc. Back before we had a Sky TV, etc. Um, and I saw that video in about 1994. And uh, after I saw that video, I just wanted to play the guitar. An absolutely amazing song. And this, is, of course, is the first album which featured the uh, the classic lineup of the Daves and um, Mighty Friedman, lead guitar, and Nick Menzer on drums. Uh, rest in peace, Nick. Another one that died way too young. Technically amazing stuff, this. Um, an essential thrash metal album. Absolutely love it. This is a 10 out of 10. If Injustice Rolls a 9 out of 10, this has got to be a 10 out of 10. It's just perfect. Can't fault anything about it whatsoever. The musical performances are fantastic. Uh, Mustang's vocals sound really, really good. I know he re-recorded some of the vocals years later. Um, I had a CD best of, which had a, uh, a version of it, of um, Take No Prisoners on there, which is probably my favourite song on the album. Re-recorded the vocals. That sounded nowhere near as good as the originals, as far as I was concerned. Um, so when I put this LP up, because I think this is a reissue, I was glad to hear it didn't have any of the changed vocals on it, because it was completely unnecessary. Beast of an album. Like I say, Holy Wars, Hangar 18, Take No Prisoners, Five Magic. Side A, absolutely perfect. Side B, Poison Was The Cure, Lucretia, Tornado of Souls, Dawn Patrol, Rust In Peace, Polaris. Great song after great song. An absolutely amazing album. Nothing wrong here whatsoever. It's all good. It's all brilliant. Absolutely love it. It's my number one when it comes to the, uh, the fourth albums released by the Big Four of Thrash Metal. And it's not easy to hit number one because none of these albums are bad and it's up against some really strong competition. But for me, this one definitely comes out on top. Essential stuff. Um, it's definitely a Desert Island disc. You know, without a doubt about it. It would have to come with me. Brilliant album. I just absolutely love it. Um, it's that good. Perfect. Number one for this list. Megadeth's Rust in Peace from 1990. 
Right, guys, that's that done. And um, before I head off, I need to uh, address something else. Rest in peace to uh, Lars Goran Petrov, or LG Petrov, as he was known. Um, vocalist for Entombed sadly passed away um, about five or six days ago now. Um, absolute shame, such a shame. Um, if there was one nice thing to see come from it, it was all the tributes I saw all over uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, on a uh, YouTube, loads of tributes absolutely everywhere. Everyone was gutted, and um, he was only f he's only just forty nine years old. It's absolutely no no age to die. Um, I was fortunate enough to see it was in Tomb Day D at Bloodstock in two thousand fourteen, and when he walked out, he sounded just as good as he did back in the day. Um, the band played well, even though it wasn't the proper entombed. It was still great to see him up on stage doing his thing. And um, such a shame he's gone. You know, it's such a young age to go. And this is one of the first death metal albums I ever heard back in about 93, 94. I know this is more the death and roll stuff. Um, it's not the proper sort of death metal like Left Hand Path is. But such an important album to me uh, when I was younger and getting into more extreme music. Such a shame he's gone. Um, he might be gone, but he won't be forgotten. He's, he will live on through his music, and um, he was just massively important. And it's such a such a sad loss. So just wanted to say rest in peace to LG Pedrov. Um, gone way too soon, and uh, a real shame. Right, guys, that's all for this week. Look after yourselves. Take care. Um, cheers for everyone who watches, as always. Comments, like, subscribes, all that stuff. If you like the videos and you're watching the videos, please do subscribe to the channel because it's very much appreciated. I will catch up with you next time. You look after yourselves. Take care. And I'll see you soon. Laters.